Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Jetpacks to the Bank. I'm here with my co-host, Joe. How you doing today, first, before we get into this series? Doing well, doing well. The Phillies completed a series sweep. Now we just need the fly guys to carry that momentum into the night, and we'll be all good today. How about that? Phillies finally took care of business. We finally get some wins. Um, yeah, finally, we can finally talk about a good series, good games, Phillies victories, and not just some losses. Um, we'll start with Friday night, get our thoughts here um, overall in the series because I apologize for being busy a little bit. We haven't been able to get our our post game out the last couple nights. But uh, Friday we'll start with overall. I mean, starts off shaky. Spencer Howard struggles, obviously leaves the game early with a, I think it was a blister injury. Doesn't believe he's going to miss much time, but he only goes three innings, gives up four runs uh, in the game. But credit we've been giving the offense credit all year about fighting back and trying to get things going and they did that here and they they bounced back fast and and took the lead just overall what were your thoughts on friday night yeah i can't control that because my window's closed and that's right outside my window so sorry (laughs) i didn't know what it was yeah that's uh that's just uh landscaping literally going on like the yards like right here outside my window of my neighbor okay. so there's nothing to do about that um i thought the offense did well Kutch did really well in that game after obviously bringing that into today so it was great to see him do well in the first and last game of the series reese hoskins also got going with one hit that game and also continuing to walk um and then bryce harper i mean i just really like what the offense did JT was obviously the star of that game with the three RBIs, but it was nice to see. It was nice to see also Boom come up and get a hit immediately. So, I mean, there was all good signs for the offense in that game, but also other than Spencer Howard, if your name was not Hector Neris in that game, it was all, it was all good sign for the, for the bullpen too, because Alvarez, Parker, Morgan, and Hunter all picked up uh, Howard for having a, not so great outing in the first place, but also not being able to go as long in length due to uh, his blister injury. So. Yeah, I mean, as much as we, we ripped on the bullpen, give those guys credit. I mean, Jose Alvarez looks fantastic so far yeah. in this season. Uh, Parker, I know he just came up, but he, he pitches a good scoreless frame. Hector Neris is, is not where you want him to be. I mean, it's simple as that. He, he hasn't had many save opportunities. He's got a couple these in this last week, and, and he's blown two of them. I mean... You talk about the the struggles there. You can't have a closer keep blowing. I think he's I think he's blowing two out of like four chances maybe. Um, so obviously not what you want to see there. You mentioned it though. Good sign from McCutcheon turning around. Got a couple hits. Hoskins is Hoskins has been hitting the ball lately. Um, he's he's got hits in six of his last seven games and he's gone base in twelve straight games now after today. So I think he I mentioned it before. I think he's starting to turn a corner, which is good to see. Obviously Harper and JT are just been on another level this year uh so good signs for them to keep it up and i mean now now he's on the il while i'm talking about the il i will announce roma quinn's on the il adam hazley's on the il jay bruce and gene segura left the game earlier today because of injuries but we don't know the seriousness of them yet so we'll keep you guys posted with that but roma quinn in this game goes two for four and i know people haven't been happy with him but overall i i've said it before too i don't think he's been that bad offensively he's got hits here and there he went two for four in this game I still to this this time period right now don't know how uh Ramos didn't make that tag I don't know how Quinn uh scored there because he looked dead to the water there but somehow slides around the tag and gets the winning run there on the Harper single but again credit to the offense bounced back right after a Naris blew the save so a lot of good signs from this game you, you get a 6-5 victory after getting swept to Baltimore so much needed game um yeah but Hopefully Howard's okay. I mean, obviously, he could see an IL stint maybe. He said it isn't serious, but we've heard players say that before. Um, but I don't know if you have anything else from this game uh, exactly. But No, the only thing I have from what you said there is I think with most, like myself with Quinn, it has nothing to do with his offense. It has to do with for the speed he has, you should be able to catch most things. And he doesn't have the best break on balls in the outfield, so he should not be a center fielder. Because your center fielder has to have the best reaction time of your outfield, which Quinn does not have the best. Harper has a better reaction time than Quinn. That's the only thing he annoys me with now, defense. And the only reason he catches some of the balls is because 
he's basically like when they threw D Gordon in center field, he would just catch up to everything. Yeah. Or when Scotty first started playing center field and still somewhat so now he's getting a little bit better at actually fielding the position, but he would literally just sprint to everything and catch it because of his speed. He, he wouldn't run the best. It would just be like, Oh, okay, there it is. And then just run like Usain Bolt to get to the ball. But um, I like the versatility of our team. I, it's just a shame Roman Quinn got injured again. And uh, I mean, that's the problem with him. He always gets going and then he goes down. Yeah, no, no, I agree with you. I understand that. I'm just saying overall, he offensively, he's to me, he's not been playing too bad. It's unfortunate that again, he's hurt and, and the defense mistakes, but overall, I, I think he's still at least an average fielder, but it doesn't even matter because now he's on the IL and yeah. we'll have Scott Kingery. When everybody play. else is on the IL too, yeah. If I have Kingery man center field for now, um, and we'll, we'll see how that goes, but I mean, if Gene Segor gets hurt or has to go on the IL, I guess you'll see Goslin and Walker take over second with Kingery staying in center. But moving on to Jeez. Saturday's game, uh, you have Aaron Nola get the start. Um Obviously, he's been dominant so far this year, and he was no different Saturday night. Uh, seven innings pitched, zero runs, eight strikeouts, two walks. Honestly, didn't think he had his best stuff compared to other games this year, but when pitchers are that good, they'll find a way to get the job done, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, offensively, again, six runs. You had another RBI from Harper. Hoskins had a nice line drive double in the right center field gap, which is another good sign for him. Um, what were your biggest takeaways from this? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if you saw the stat that popped up while watching the game today, but it was part of the tweet that I retweeted and you showed in the group yesterday. But his record's 2-0 and with a .85 um, in 21 innings and 30 strikeouts. But the other part of that was he's the first Philly since the current mound distance was established in 1893 to allow three or fewer hits and strike out eight or more batters in three straight starts. So, yeah, That's Aaron, That's- Aaron Aaron Nola has been on a uh, roll this year. And as it said, when that stat hit, uh, popped up, he's been pitching fearless this year, just like he did in 18. He's had all that sick movement with the lefties coming back into the lefties when he starts it at their hip. And then he has the very great movement with his breaking ball on the outside. His changeup looks great. And like Ruben said uh, on the telecast, he didn't, when he, when he was drafted, he was more of a guy they knew would be a Crick Wiser, but had two great pitches. And then he added that changeup, which is what made him an ace caliber pitcher rather than a two through four, like where they originally had him stocked at. So that's uh, that's why Nola just keeps working at his craft each year, and it shows. And you could tell from his interviews at the end of last year, he was definitely going to work on a lot this offseason, and that completely showed with uh, him bouncing back and getting that feeling of his pitches. It feels like he's fully going again. I think it's fully safe to say Aaron Nola's back. Um, I mean, obviously it's early on, but he's definitely going to, if he continues this, he'll be in the Cy Young conversation. Um, I don't know what Lester's doing to this point, but he's been on fire this year too. So another guy that kind of rejuvenated his his season. Uh, I know going in today, Lester had a 1.06 ERA. Um, Again, I don't know what I don't know what he's doing to this current time period right now in his start, but obviously that's going to be a contender in that spot. Um, but no, overall Saturday was a good game. Nola dominates. Unfortunately, uh, uh, unfortunately, bullpen comes in, and on a Saturday night it was uh, Ro- Ra- excuse me, sorry, Ramon Rosso, uh, and he gives up two runs. Overall, didn't look terrible. Uh, very good to see him bounce back after that. I was kind of happy. Girardi kind of left him in there to just figure or figure it out and finish out that outing rather than pulling him after that uh, two-run shot, uh, especially with the young guy, kind of just give him more innings, more experience I agree. in yeah. that sense with the lead. Um, and I know you're a big big fan of his, so why don't you just uh, just, uh, just quickly kind of just what, what were your takeaways from him as, I, again, he's a young guy. He clearly has some good pitches, but kind of struggled on, on another case and has a 5.79 year right now to the state. Yeah, I mean, when you have a bad first outing, uh, you're going to obviously not look too sexy after that until you have a couple of those outings as a reliever because we all know how relievers work. Bad first outing it takes, and this year we only have 60 games. So usually it takes about a month to lower your ERA. So you have to start pitching enough. But he, before that, against Atlanta, pitched one and a third, gave up nothing, pitched an inning against Baltimore, gave up nothing, was one of the only people that pitched well against Baltimore. Um 
And then other that's a reliever. And then pitched two innings and gave up two. But again, it's on one mistake pitch. And he is a guy that is a guy you expect to pitch a couple innings. So I like the fact that we stretched him out because he is a guy you think might be able to be a two inning reliever at a time if he gets going. So I do really agree with you there. He had good movement on his pitches in his last three outings, including the one on Saturday against the Mets. So I just think he's starting to get that feeling going. That's exactly what I hope to see in Connor Brogdon, another youngster with good pitches and stuff as we give him more time because he had a rough first outing too. Uh, His ERA is just high because of his first outing. And now he made that one mistake pitch to Dominic Smith. That's, that's all. Yeah, no, I agree with you, and hopefully he continues to to just develop it, and I think that's going to be important for him. Unfortunately, exactly. with not having, obviously, solid relievers around him, he's kind of being forced into these situations that m- more high pressure than you like. You'd rather get him started in these 6 nothing games, kind of get a feel for the league. Uh, but unfortunately, obviously, yesterday he was able to do that, but in other cases he's been kind of just thrown straight into the mix. But overall, again, solid game for the Phillies. Got their second straight win to, uh, after Saturday. Segura had another hit. Didi Gregorius went three for four. I mean, just this offense is starting to feel like what we expected coming in the year. Um, but no, very solid 6-2 win. They used a big fifth inning, uh, five runs, to really get the damage done and, and put, that, put that game away. And then moving into today, you finished that sweep. And funny enough, it was another 6-2 to <laughs> game. Um, this time it was your off-season acquisition in Zach Wheeler that started. And uh, kind of like Nola, I, I honestly felt like he didn't have his best stuff compared to other outings he's had with us this season. But he, he figured out ways to get the job done. Um, I forget what point it was. I think it might have been the fifth inning. He just didn't look as sharp. His pitch count kind of got high. Um, but no, he, he finishes the game fantastic. Seven innings, two runs. Take that every day from a starting pitcher. Uh, lowers his ERA to 2.81. Um, after that, after that start, um, now you're looking at your one-two punch here with Aaron Nola two and one, a 2.05 ERA, 37 strikeouts. Um, Zach Wheeler is now three and zero with a 2.81 ERA, 12 strikeouts. He's obviously not a strikeout pitcher, but just I mean, that's what you want at the top of the rotation. Um, Gene Segura gets another hit. Hoskins gets another hit. Harper goes two for three. Real Muto goes three for four. So, again, Gregorius gets another hit. Alec Bohm goes two for four. So, just hits all around the offense. Um, I think one of the biggest things out of this was McCutcheon comes off the bench and gets the home run. Maybe he should, he should just come off the bench all the time because I think this is like the second straight time he came off the bench and had two RBIs finished in the game. But uh, what were your biggest takeaways from today before I ask uh, just questions overall in the series? Yeah, well, when I did um, my mini video because YouTube was being a – a pain in the ass earlier with uploading stuff uh, on Instagram for the pregame. I said that I think Gene would have been a star. I looked good in that first inning. Then he struck out twice. So, you know, he got that. He got that one big hit for us. So I looked pretty decent there. Real quick. Uh-huh. Real quick I actually disagree with the uh, scores. I thought he should have had two hits. I think he, he liked that. that one would have been a hit. I think he liked that one out and the first baseman missed it. Gotcha. I, I would have gave him a hit on that, if but I don't know. Maybe I'm just maybe to review it afterwards because sometimes they change stuff. But well, that's what they did with JTs. They yeah. originally had him at two for four and then changed that one that that guy missed a hit. But yeah, because JT ended up going three for four to bring his average back to three hundred, and then Harper continues. I mean, those guys just continue to rake. You see DD with the single up the middle. Uh, he keeps getting about a hit per day at least. Boom has two hits again. I mean, he's. He's the most impressive thing since he came up, and that's exactly what we want to see. He's had professional at-bats and all of his at-bats. Uh, when he's got out, he still had a pretty good at-bat at the plate for the most part. And I just really liked what I saw from him. And also a big thing, Scott Kingery. Scott Kingery went two for four today. Scott Kingery has not been hitting at all. So that's something you like to see. I liked how Girardi put him ninth because like when you have the DHs in, that's almost – a, re- t- a new table setter because you have the leadoff hitter as the table setter. Then you have the bottom, the ninth hitter to set the table for the start of the lineup. So that being able to get on base really helped the start of the, the top of the lineup in Hoskins, Harper, and Real Muto with Kingery there. So, I mean, I liked how I saw better at-bats from him. His one out was also a hard grounder to the shortstop. 
other than his strikeout. So he looked a little bit better at the dish today. So that's really what I what I took from this game because the other guys, we almost expect them to do well in Gregorius, Harper, and Real Muto at this point. Boom, honestly, if he just keeps doing this for a week, is going to get grouped into that category in the first week and a half of his career. So I agree with that. Um, no, and it's good to see. And that's one of the questions I had. I mean, obviously, he's only played, what, four games now on the year. But what are your early uh, thoughts about Boom? Like, is he – I mean, obviously, you can't judge if he's going to turn out to what we th- think he is or whatnot. Obviously, it's still early. But just talk about his overall approach to the game, fielding and hitting. Obviously, kind of got lucky today with his – his error where he overthrows uh, Hoskins at first, but they're able to chase it down and throw the guy out at the plate. Can't remember who was running, um, but they throw him out at the plate to save the run. Obviously, that's a tough play to make. Maybe he should have uh, just held on to it and gave up the infield single or whatever. But overall, how do you think his approach to the game has been this, this first uh, four games into his career? I think it's been pretty good. He's made some nice plays at third. He missed the one like Jake even said it after the one game when he said he should have got that one when he went to the side. That was like a hit or miss play. That's kind of basically what Arietta said about it. Um, I you, know, th- you know, if Arietta says it's, it's a hard play, it's a hard play. Cause yeah. Like to oh, play yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jake, Jake says it as it is. So if Jake says it's a decently tough play, that's a tough play. He's not going to give a kid uh, credit for missing a play probably. Um, so I think he's looked pretty good, honestly. I mean, I know I saw Jack Fritz tweeted something out that he's definitely not smooth at third, and he's like, and I think what people replied is good. He's smooth enough for now because he just got called up. He wasn't even playing games. We were playing simulated games. So, I mean, it's going to take a little bit to get to the level of the major leagues, the speed of playing the third base position in a non-simulated game format. So, I think. He's looked fairly solid. He's made some off plays, but he's going to take. We knew fielding was what he's going to take a bit in, but overall, I think he's looked pretty good for a guy that has all his questions in fielding. Now, at the plate, he's looked exactly as we thought. He looked like a professional hitter as soon as he's came up. But for a guy that's had questions in fielding, I think he's looked perfectly fine. You're going to expect some overthrows Mm -hmm. from a guy that has questions in fielding as a youngster, and that's what we got. And we got that one play that he missed that he said he should have made, but. That's good to see because you know when someone says they should have made it, they're going to work to keep working and make sure they make that play the next time. Yeah, and I was really encouraged by the one double he had today. He went complete opposite field, um, sent it right down close to the line. I mean, it had, it had some way. It was clearly a fair ball, but down the right field side there. Um, it's very very encouraging to see him use the the whole field too rather than just seeing him be a pool ball hitter. But, no, very good start to his career. I'm excited for him uh, overall. We mentioned it, some guys starting to hit, obviously. Uh, one of the biggest ones is Hoskins. He's a guy we obviously need to get going. Do you think he's really starting to turn that corner? Do you think it is an advantage of just the weak Mets pitching this weekend? Obviously, a, a struggling Steve Matz, lefty, so that advantage Hoskins. Obviously, a, a struggling Rick Porcello. And then DeGrom got scratched Friday before the start. I forget who ended up starting that game. Walker but, Lockett. Yeah, that's, that was it. Walker, yeah. yeah, he starts Friday night. And obviously... Baltimore doesn't have the best pitching either, so took advantage of that as well. Like I said, he's hitting six of his last seven. Obviously, we all know he can walk, so he's got on base in 12 straight games now. So uh, what do you think? Has he finally turned the corner, or is it just taking advantage of some bad pitching? It's hard to tell when you have off pitching going in three straight games, but it looks like he's using the field more, which... his swing to kind of how it was when he first came up where it was more go with where it's thrown rather than let me keep trying to crank all of these pitches like that when I'm not walking like that's kind of what his swing was when he wasn't walking to start the season it was way too heavy where now it seems like it's coming back to where he was so I do want to see how he obviously looks as we get into playing well, actually, as we get into maybe playing Toronto, because depending who Boston has throwing in these games, their pitching is absolutely they, a monstrosity. They have, um, so they have Zach Godley. Okay, well, he has like a 19 ERA to start, like a 9 ERA and, to start. Uh, this Kyle season. Hart. So Godley is 0-2 with an 8.18 ERA, and, Z- and Kyle Hart is 0 like a 24 ERA. 22.5 yeah. ERA. 
So, yeah, advantage for Hoskins there again. We'll be, you know, the whole team, obviously, facing some weak pitching. Honestly, I mean, we'll get into that tomorrow. We're going to release a Red Sox preview tomorrow, but we could take both those games. you got Arietta, who's pitched yeah. well, and Eflin on the mound. No, that's why I didn't want to make that point. I was like, well, yeah, I want to see how he gets going in the next year. I'll wait a minute, wait a minute. That's still not <laughs> a good baseline to go off of. So, depending who Toronto has pitching, in that double header, if they have some of their good guys going, that would be a good test for Reese. But they obviously probably didn't announce yet who they have going in that. So when we play Thursday, I think that is, that would be the best test for him to start, I would say. Yeah, both teams have not announced pitchers for Thursday yeah. yet. Um, but honestly, Blue Jays don't have – I mean, yeah, they have Tanner Roark, uh, who I mean, the Phillies should be familiar with him, obviously, having to face him a lot um, when he was with that Washington. And then uh, Ryu, he's obviously a good – Pitcher, um, yeah, but lefty. Shoemaker's all right, and I think he's pitched well against us in the past. So you should be able to take advantage of that a little bit. Um, but no, yeah, overall, uh, good series here. I don't know if you have anything else. I would. The other thing I would just have is, um, do you think the timing of these injuries is worrisome at all, or do you think they're just being fluke accidents? Like, do you kind of blame the upstart random or the, the shutdown and all that? Or do you think they're just random stuff? Because to me, it was just odd. We just lost Segura, possibly Bruce, Hazley, Quinn, maybe Howard, depending on what they end up. So you might lose five guys in the span of two days. Like That's just unfortunate, especially when you start winning. I mean, that's just got to be a blow to the team. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of injuries uh, going on around the league in general right now. Um, I just think... I just think it's something that's bound to happen, and we kind of had to expect coming back this quickly, especially blisters on pitchers' fingers. I mean, when you're throw, not used to throwing a ball for a while and you're ramping it up, stuff like that's probably bound to happen the most. Um, it's unfortunate the bigger injuries these pitchers are getting from ramping it up around the league, and I hope uh, to God that stays away from more stiff. Um, so I just think... It's not too surprising, but hopefully Hazley's is just a 10-day, like a short IL stint uh, with the wrist there, and he's able to come back quickly. Hopefully Quinn's because it didn't, like, is not too long of an extended thing because sometimes we know with him he has lingering uh, injuries whenever he gets an injury. And then we need – I heard that Suarez and uh, Robertson came back up to Philly and are getting work in soon. So if they're able to be back in by the start of September sometime, that would also be a huge boost for this team just as a whole. You know, I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, it's a shortened season. Obviously, every team has their own. I think uh, when I was watching post game the other day, they said I think it was like 50 pitchers are already on the aisle around the league. Like that's just insanity. Yeah, like and it's that's a lot. Why, yeah. that's why Girardi keeps referring to the beginning of the year of working these guys back into it after that second layoff, just because like that's a lot of injuries for this shortened season. But hopefully, like you said, they're all short stints. We get some guys back here soon. But um, yeah, I don't know if you have any final thoughts before we, we close this one out uh, for this episode of Jet Pets, Jet Packs to the Bank. No, other than the fact that, as I thought, and I know Rob was huge on Nola, I thought he would do really well, but Zach Wheeler, two-headed monster right now. Both right now would probably be top five in the Cy Young, so my prediction's looking good so far. So. Yeah, no, I absolutely uh, agree. I mean, both pitchers are looking very well, and you can't ask for anything better at the top of the rotation. Yeah, I'll need to say this. If the bullpen figures it out and they start like getting shut down innings and stuff, and you can really rely on them. This team, this team is obviously dangerous, and obviously mm-hmm. that was both of our concerns coming into the year on what would hold this team back was the bullpen, and clearly that's the case right now. But if you ever, if they ever can just figure out get on some type of role, this team is going to be dangerous. Um, Hundred percent. But yeah, if you like our stuff, please uh, subscribe, like the channel. Um, feel free to give us comments, uh, any questions you have on the team or anything else, let us know. We'd love to answer them. Love to interact with our listeners. Uh, but yeah, again, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, but this is another episode of jet Pat- jet packs to the bank, huge Philly sweep over the Mets. Look out for our Red Sox preview coming out tomorrow night. Have a great, uh, have a great night, everyone.